welcome to the preview show. Uh, my name's Scott Frame, this is Josh Pickering, and joining us this evening is Team Pickering. Part of the Pickering team is Stephen Lumsden. Uh, we're going to be previewing the Parsons Peebles Monarchs match against the Berwick Bandits this Friday at Armadale Stadium. We're going to speak to Josh about last, last Saturday's match at Berwick. Uh, coming up as well, we'll also speak to Gary Havelock, uh, the new Berwick promoter and team manager. Uh, is again as we look ahead to Saturday night and of course we've got Mike's blast from the past to classic Armadale races and as part of our interaction on the, pre uh, the preview show we'll also be uh, putting your questions to Josh Pickering later on uh, but just to, uh, first of all to pick up on Saturday's fantastic win uh, at the Berwick Bandits Josh your first time seeing Berwick what was your thoughts obviously recording two heat wins after an exclusion in heat one that must have kind of set you back mentally yeah, where well, we started off it was a bit unfortunate, I suppose. We just got to make sure we're we're all organised now, I suppose, eh? Well, it's not shot at anyone, but it was just this thing that had to happen, and it is what it is. But we were good to go off and come back from what we are. Um, usually, if we've I've had a, a bit of a drama in heat one at the start, it's a bit hard to overcome. But um, I think we've done it not too bad at all. So. Good stuff, Stephen. Obviously, you've seen you've seen guys make their debut at Berwick for the Monarchs and they've struggled. What, what were your initial thoughts of Josh? Again, nightmare start, but he, he did redeem himself after that. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I knew I knew it would go well. He's, he's, a, he's a good motorcyclist. Um, we watched a few videos. We, we tried to go down, but I didn't imagine that he'd be he'd be winning two heats after that. But after his first ride, in my opinion. He had a you know a couple of warm up laps if you want to call it that, <clears throat> but the two laps that that followed that were pretty special. I thought and I, I thought yeah, he'll score points. Uh, just to look at the team as a whole, Ricky again after his max paid maximum on Friday night, he was he was fantastic down at Berwick. Sam again playing that number one role. Yeah, I mean I, I think in in my opinion again uh, they they are the, the the strongest top two in in the league. Um, Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. You, you mentioned before as well about maybe Sam leading the team. What kind of advice did, did they give you before Saturday? It's obviously a very difficult track to go to. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but was, was there any words of advice before you took to the track? As I've mentioned before, we have um, our team chat, so we all have a chat or whatever like that. But um, all they said was just to really not set expectations too high. It's a bit of a difficult track and just take it as it comes and when we went there, we we had a walk, and personally, I didn't realise how tight it was coming into turn one and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it was okay, but it is what it is, and yeah, I was I was pretty happy with how it is. Like it's yeah, it's not it's not too fast. At the end of the day, it's a circle. It's got dirt on it, so <laughs> that don't worry me. When when you look at Berry, when you look at the whole league, it's so there's a lot of different shaped tracks, different sizes and stuff. Was that part of the appeal of actually coming to Britain to race and all these different types of circuits? Yeah, definitely. Um, at home, they're pretty well prepped, like to a T, every every meeting type of thing. And and the best thing is at home, it's with the weather. It really stays on our side. So the the people who prep the tracks, it's it's a lot easier for them other than. Mm -hmm getting rain, wind and all the rest of it and um, I think it's it's going to be good and it's going to lift me up as a rider I believe, uh, riding all different tracks and, and going to all different tracks with all great, at least you know two or three riders out of the seven who we're going to be coming up against, they're going to be good and they're going to have a good advantage around their own track so even just learning pointers off them and seeing what they do will be good I think. We're going to hear more, more from Josh uh, later on in the show. As I say, he's going to be taking your questions. But first up, we're going to speak to Berwick team manager Gary Havelock. Uh, but before we speak to Gary, we're going to see a classic race involving Gary and his then teammate James Greaves at Redcar as they take on Theo Piper and Ronnie Corey. Well, this race is for pride only. And the two bears in the heat are unbeaten. It's Gary Havelock from gate one, Theo Piper gate two, James Graves gate three, and Ronnie Corey in gate four. Corey's lifted, and the visitors have gated, trying to see through the sunshine here. It's Graves and Havelock who've gone ahead once again. The Monarchs gating is pretty laughable, frankly. Theo Piper's not been in the hunt for a race win at any time, and Ronnie Corey 
Doesn't look as though he's going to break through the Bears team riding here. Avalok keeping his eyes peeled. Greaves leads again. He could be on his way to his second 15-point maximum. In fact, it doesn't look as though anything could possibly stop it, other than bad luck, and we're not looking for that. Havelock backing him up comfortably. Theo Piper is absolutely a mile behind, and Ronnie Corey trailing as well. So it could hardly have been easier. It's free gift time. Harvey, you bring your Berwick team to Edinburgh on Friday night. Are uh, you looking forward to travelling up? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's, we've got uh, three matches this weekend, three tough matches. Ed Edinburgh Friday night, Glasgow at home on Saturday, and then away at Glasgow on Sunday. Um, so the fixtures aren't getting any easier. Um, and, yeah, we, we're struggling a little bit, but um, we're working hard on it. And, um, you know, let's see what happens. You've had quite a few matches on the road, Harvey. Do you think um, maybe some defeats on the road have may maybe added to a bit of lacking confidence at the minute? Yeah, they probably have, you know. And, and you know, we've been to tough, tough places to go. We've been to Ipswich, we've been to Sheffield, been to Newcastle twice. Um, all tough places to go. Um, but, you know, sooner or later, we're going to have to start making some gates. It's, it's the, you know, 90% of the problem is our gating, you know, we're not, um, we're just not getting out quick enough, and you know, you can't give, you can't give these top teams um, ten yard start every race. You've got a new man at number one, Harvey uh, Lewis Bridger. I've got a feeling that Lewis might enjoy the Armadale track. It's, it's maybe a, a size and a shape that he'll enjoy. I think he'll be spectacular on there, no doubt. Um, you know, he, he is very, very, very good on the what I call the technical tracks, and um, Edinburgh being one of those. Probably quite like East Bourne, maybe, uh, where, where Lewis grew up. Um, and yeah, I don't think he'll have any problem getting around there. Um, and I get the fact that he's not making starts could make for a very exciting night. Yeah, uh, there's there's a few a few of the Berwick guys that actually go really well around Armadale. Is this probably Berwick's best opportunity to get a point on the board away from home? Oh, it would be nice because, uh, you know, uh, before too long we've got a played about five or six matches and not have a point so um, we're going to, going to really uh, you know we're changing the team around uh, the riding order and see if that can uh, give them a kick start and uh, they'll be you know the team are under no, under no illusion that um, you know they have to do better you know, we'll, we'll, we put too much uh, time money and effort into um, you know uh, rebranding and, and relaunching the bandits um, that we just can't afford you, you mentioned that, Gary, you enjoying being involved at, well, Premier League Championship level again? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's the first time I've ever really been involved um, in running a club. Um, I've always ridden for clubs, and then for the last four years, I've worked for a club and team manager, um, but now I'm actually involved in the club. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a learning curve, it's a learning curve for, for all three of us and um, you know Scott done an amazing job pre-season in uh, going out and getting sponsors and you know spreading the generally spreading the word and promoting it and um, I think that's shown in, in our crowd so far um, I think our lowest crowd uh, was about 750 and that was against Ipswich when we were already really out of the tie um, and you know the, the, the crowds against Newcastle and um, Edinburgh and hopefully this Saturday Glasgow I've been, uh, I've been very encouraging. That must be positive for yourself as well, because as you say, you've put a lot of time and effort, but the guys have got to be winning on the track to keep the fans coming, haven't they? They do, yes they do. And, um, you know, you only need to lose a couple of home matches, um, and then you, you know, get the same old player, here we go again, and um, people start drifting away. You know, we managed to beat Ipswich in the, in the cup, which is a bit irrelevant, but beating a really good team, um, you know, was, was a good fillet for us, but then uh, Edinburgh came last Friday and just just schooled us out the start. So it's simple as that. We couldn't we couldn't buy a start to save our lives, and then you know it's not going to get any easier. So we really need to um, pack our trapping gloves. Well, Harvey, we look forward to catching up with you on Friday. Yeah, me too. 
Thanks to Harvey for joining us on the preview show. We look forward to seeing him on Friday. Stephen, just to come to you first, Harvey mentioned there about about getting away points on the board. Uh, they haven't had the best of seasons, Berwick, but they do have capabilities coming here. Absolutely. Um, one of the words that he used to describe Lewis Bridger was spectacular, and I think that that's exactly what, what we'll see. I mean, he's, he's a small track specialist, having been you know reared, if you want to call it that, in, in Eastbourne and in Lakeside, so looking forward to seeing him here and think it's probably long overdue to be honest um, but yeah really looking forward to seeing him uh, <clears throat> Lewis had a great race with the Rust Brothers yeah. and Saturday night really showed his capabilities on a track that wasn't maybe too easy to pass on he made it look very easy in that heat that's the kind of thing that we can look forward to seeing on Friday isn't it yeah absolutely absolutely uh, of course Liam Carr a former monarch so to speak yeah. he did come in and do a job for us back in 2013 if I remember right uh, Liam actually got the fastest time in the Premier League final away down at Summer, Somerset all those years ago as a, as a raw teenager so to speak but Liam can come here and score points as well and of course as Harvey says they're mixing the riding order up for Friday so that, that yeah. maybe could work for him I mean I, th I think he scored zero here on, in, on his last visit but that, that'll count for nothing um, Liam will know that, I'm sure he'll want to, to do much better himself. Um, yeah, and another good rider on his day round Armadale, so. We're looking at Danny Gapmeyer as well, a bit like Mark Rush, Stephen, where uh, Berwick are kind of relying on Mark, uh, Danny to score a lot of points. Uh, do you think that Danny gapmeyer has got the capability of scoring the points around here, especially against Mark? Yeah, I, I mean, I must admit, I was, I, was, I was quite impressed with Danny on Saturday night. I, I, it was not, I hadn't seen much of him before, um, but yeah, Young kid, raw talent, I think. I think he's got a real chance on the sport, so. Just to come to you about the Monarchs, Josh, uh, after last week, a lot of the guys of uh, confidence will be high, but two guys who maybe got copped a bit of criticism was was Max and Mitchell. Mitchell's obviously dealt with that better, going to the King of the Potteries on Sunday, scoring a maximum. He's been able to kind of ride the couple of meetings out of his system, whereas Max is probably still struggling. Uh, what what you saying one another? Obviously, you said you've got your group chat. Is there any chat about trying to get Max's head up, trying to get him going uh, in the the championship? At the end of the day, mate, we're all just human beings, and um, people go through tough times. It might and it could be just this riding. It could be something at home. You, you don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, not everyone's perfect, and not everyone can perform perfect every week. Mm -hmm. So I've seen in the past. I, I don't really know Max personally, and well, considering I've only just moved here and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but. I've seen plenty of videos and he is a great rider and I think it's just going to be building his confidence back up again. Um, how he's moved from dropping National League and just taking on Elite League and Championship League now, it's a fairly big commitment I think and um, just for him to get the grips of that and just riding against sort of, he's got a, he's got a very big responsibility too riding at number four I believe and um, there's no really easy heats and um, I think just personally it's, it'll be not only just himself, we've been knocking around a bit with um, people, you know, bagging him out here and there, and just little, little, um, oh, it's hard to say, but just little picks at him, and it will build up, I think, and it's it's hard to ignore the stuff like that, especially when you are feeling down. Mm -hmm. And but um, I believe if he if he can get his head right, and yeah, with the boys that we've got with us, we're all you know we're all getting on very well, considering we haven't really been with each other for so long, and um, yeah, I, I reckon he'll be all right to be honest with you. Max is a rider that you've seen do a lot of laps around here. As Graham mentioned in the, the aftermatch show on, on Friday, he, I think he averaged near enough seven points. I think it was last season or the season before at home. So the, the, the capabilities of scoring big points are there. It's just a matter of getting them confident, isn't it? And the fans have got to get behind him as well. I know he copped a bit of criticism, but the, the fans have got to play their part in trying to get him going. Absolutely. I mean, I know that he's made quite a quite a, a big investment in his machinery. He, he wouldn't do that if he didn't care. Mm -hmm. um, he cares greatly. We, we know that. We see it. Um, we see him every every meeting. Um, I'd, I think you'd be hard hard pressed to find a rider that had passed more people around Armadale in the past couple of years than Max. You know, he's, he's very impressive when he gets going around there. So mm -hmm. he'll quite he'll undoubtedly come good. It's a long season. Oh, it's yeah. a long season we're talking. We've yeah, only a couple, matches and couple of meetings in and you're taking some criticism. It must be kind of difficult to kind of deal with that as well, no matter where your head's at. Uh, just to speak about Mitchell, Josh, how important do you think, or how much of a good thing do you think it is that Mitchell had that, no matter who you're racing against, 
winning, yeah, exactly winning right. breeds confidence, confidence yeah. breeds winning, doesn't it? Well, One hand feeds the other. He can only beat the people he's up against. Yeah. And um, for him to ride a 15 point max, he's obviously didn't make a mistake. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he's, um, and I, we went out for dinner the other night, and you could see him yourself, he was a lot happier. Uh-huh. So, um, having a few tough meetings at even at home before it, it's now my job, but um, uh-huh. at home. If I had a bad meeting, I'd feel really down on myself. But if I went and just done any other meeting and scored some points, and you you get that buzz back, like you can do it, and you can win races, and it feels a lot better winning races than going home with a dirty bike. So um, yeah, I believe that that's definitely helped him, and we'll just see on Friday night how much it's, it actually has picked him up. Just to speak about Mark Russ again at reserve, Stephen, how crucial is it that he has another good night, especially maybe if another couple of riders aren't kind of performing to the level that they would want to? Yeah, absolutely. The reserve berth is, is absolutely crucial to, to, to every meeting, I guess. Um, Mark himself is an outstanding rider. Mm-hmm. I, I'm amazed that he's, he's at reserve. It's, it's more good fortune, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, crucial. First of all, thank you to everyone who took the time to leave a question for Josh. We're going to get through as many of these as we possibly can. But the first question we're going to come to is from Liam Carline. It's which current championship rider is, uh, is Josh most looking forward to coming up against? Um, personally, I like a bit of a mate rivalry. And I've got two of my mates from home, uh, Ty Proctor and Mason, riding for Worky. So I look forward to coming up against them. And yeah, just to see some familiar faces around and... Hopefully turning them smiles upside down, to be honest with you. But, yeah, and it'll all be in good fate. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to working match. Uh, Jimmy Scott asks, how, do you, how did you feel last week, Josh, when you were standing celebrating in front of the Monarch support after your first uh, first race win? A bit relieved, actually. <laughs> um, the first race, actually, in Scottish Opens, we've gone back to it a couple of times. Uh-huh. I still haven't quite come to grips with it, what I've done, and I've, I've watched it a fair few times, and... It still makes me angry every time I watch it. So, um, yeah, I was, I was fairly happy that it got got to happen and I just wanted to show the fans, I suppose, that I'm not here to muck around and hopefully there's going to be a lot more of that. Scott Gabwood asked, were you surprised how well you took to the Berwick track? I'm not saying surprised, but I was looking forward to, uh, to a challenge, I suppose, and um, the way it looked, it, it definitely did look like a challenge considering how tight it looked coming into Turn 1. And I... Um, yeah, as I could see, it was a bit of a gating track, and um, I was just lucky to get a couple of gates, I suppose. But yeah, I was happy with how it went, and yeah, just on to the next one, I think. Just to pick up on that, before you actually started the season, uh, we were told that you weren't a gator, but yeah. for the evidence that we've actually seen for his very first heat in, in British Speedway, you can make some good starts. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose <laughs> the more of the adrenaline, I think. You can, um, now that I'm not just doing 50 hours work a week, then working on bikes and then travelling nine hours to then race. Mm-hmm. Um, all I got to do was just worry about prepping me bikes here, ride me bikes on Friday or, mm-hmm. or this week Friday and, and then the following Friday and Sunday. But um, I think just all my effort and time's just been on bike prep and stuff like that. So I know that when I go, everything should work how I want it to work. So um, I think it's more of a learning thing with how my bikes are setting up and a few tips off a couple of the boys have just clutched it up. Um, Fricky helped me out a fair bit, so yeah, it's just it's good to try new things, and it's all positive so far. So hopefully, just get it out a bit quicker. Gary Rogers has asked a question that I, I, I like as well. Uh, does Josh and any other boys have a pre-meeting ritual, like something daft they always like to do before the start of every meeting? I love a good sleeping for a start, <laughs> Steve. I'll tell you that. But um, yeah. I, I like having bacon and eggs for breakfast, right. and if Gemma's going to put a feed on before the meeting, I don't mind eating pasta either. But um, I wouldn't say anything silly. You just, just, just go about your day normal. You, yeah. um, you don't ride until seven thirty, so you got all day to do whatever you want, type of thing. So, been playing a bit of PlayStation and getting a bit excited <laughs> like there. To. But yeah, just nothing really. Just, just same as I think. Mm-hmm. Trees any other but normal day. Uh, Scott Somerville asked, he's asked a few we're going to get through. Uh, are there any existing or previous Speedway riders that have inspired you to compete in Speedway? Start off with Jason. Um, well, Crumpy, he's three-time world champion. And from where he come to where he's in the sport now, he's um, yeah, he's, he's developed it a lot, I think. And he's inspired a lot of Australian riders. And you can't put it past CH either. Like, um, Chris winning the, win the world title in 2012. And 
he's on form again now, so hopefully something can come about there again. But Doily, it's just it's hard, mate. Like there's so many, and there's so many that live close to home as well. So not only are they, I look up to them, but they're all mates as well. Yeah. So yeah, it will be good to hopefully have a name like theirs one day, and people talk about me in the sense that I talk about them. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, Scott's followed up with your recent trip to Denmark uh, to build bikes. What's your thoughts on potentially competing in Europe? Yeah, I, I didn't mind it. It was a bit colder than here to be honest with you, wasn't it? <laughs> Snowing and whatnot. But um, yeah, we had a look at Ultra, and that's the track we went to, eh? Yeah, yeah had a look at Ultra, and then yeah, just spent a few days with Christian and at KLS building the bikes up, like you said. And yeah, I, I don't care where I ride, mate. I just I like to stay on the bike as much as possible, and hopefully, if I um can improve my form from what I'm doing and get a lot more consistent, then yeah, anything can happen. We've only done two meetings in the UK, so only time will tell. But yeah, if I um, have a good season, then yeah, there's no reason I wouldn't be looking to venture out that way for the next few years. Yeah, Fiona Cup, so I swear, were Edinburgh the only UK team to try and sign you? No, nah, they wasn't. But um, looking, I've, I've mentioned a couple of times, but looking in the past and looking at videos and, and hearing the stories when the boys come home, that about um, not really wanting to go to Edinburgh because it's a bit of a tough track. I thought, oh, well, there you go. If you can, if I could ride for them and get a good home advantage, then mm-hmm. it's um, yeah, it would, like exactly it. Like uh, it would be good to have a home advantage, and I don't mind a challenge. So it'd be good to take on something that no one else can really do. Uh, one thing that Keith Lawrence picked up on is something that people have picked up on in the past is the fact that number two riders are actually finished. They're meeting by heat ten. Uh, you've got four four races in the space at that time. I think he's getting that. Does, does that add to the pressure during the meeting that everything's got to go that bit quicker? Well, personally, um, I can't really say. Steve-O, he's he's got a different different uh, comment for sure, but. Me coming having, to having been a mechanic that's mechanic for somebody that's rode in number two, I can actually yeah. get his pressure. <laughs> well, all I can say is that I don't know no different. So <laughs> right. um, I've come here, and as far as I'm concerned, that's just what I have to do, and we just have to get things done. But if I rode at a different number where it was more evenly spread out to then going to number two, mm-hmm. I would realise myself how much I have to, I, mean, I am under the pump. Mm-hmm. But being as oh, that's all I know, then yeah. that's all I know. So it don't really worry me, but. Yes, Plus there's not many tra- track changes as well. Like you, you would maybe see how the track changes between the best. Yeah, the best. On in the night. Like you said, track changes. Um, the best thing is, of course, we're always out. The mm. track doesn't change too much. But say if you were to go out and heat, like Sam the other night, he rode heat five and then heat eleven. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a there's a big difference there, and there's a few track grades, so there could be a little little bit of different um, moisture coming through or anything, mate. Mm-hmm. So, I believe. The more times you're on the track, the quicker it is, the more consistent it is for you and the more at home you feel, I suppose. But, um, is it maybe a shock to the system as well? I know in Australia they like to maybe have the meetings kind of dragged out a wee bit longer, maybe junior race and sidecar racing involved. Yeah. Is it maybe a shock to the system how quickly they get through the meetings here? I actually enjoy it, to be honest with yeah. you. I don't like sitting around and Steve, I'll tell you that, I'll get a bit <laughs> bored. But um, yeah, it's all right. I, 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 I enjoy, you know... Anything, quick game's a good game, so the quicker we get it done, the quicker we go home. But um, I, I do enjoy the whole time I'm there. I, it feels like it does go too quick because uh-huh. I actually, all I wait for is Friday nights or whatever to go to, go racing. But um, yeah, in two hours it's all over, so it is what it is. Uh, Scott Somerville again, his last question. Which engines and frames do you use and why? I run the Stewart frames. To be honest with you, I'm literally, it might sound silly, but... I've tried something that I've never really tried before, and Max Frick he's never hasn't really made a bad decision yet, has he? No. So um, <laughs> he's one of my good mates, and I just asked him what he runs. So my bikes are built exactly the same as his. Right. So that's that could be the reason why it's helped me out. But um, yeah, and engines I've got a Brian Carger engine I bought last year, mm-hmm. and then um, also last year we bought just a standard kit engine and. My engine builder back home, Mark Penfold, he um, worked his magic there and that was the first time I raced it at Berwick and it seems to go very very good. So I'm going to ride that again on Friday night and hopefully score a few points. Good man. Uh, a question for Ian Adam here, of course, Ian with his Glasgow Connections had to bring this up. Uh, could you ask Josh if he's looking forward to racing at Scotland's finest Speedway Stadium in a couple of weeks? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, I suppose. Um, I've, I've been there a couple of times and we're going again on Sunday just to have a look and... Um, I don't seem too much of a passing track, so that what I've seen. We went there for the Ben Fun, it was a bit wetter and there was a bit of a dirt line, but um, 
the league match, the first league match was pretty slick, and whoever got the gate really won, I think. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, and it looks a fun track, and yeah, I look forward to going there. Yeah, Alan Houston's asked. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, is, is British Speedway everything that you expected it to be? I know you're only two weeks in, but is it everything you expected it to be? Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. The, looking at my calendar and me being my first year, and like next week I ride Friday and Sunday, then the following week I ride Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. That excites me, mm-hmm. and um, I definitely don't expect stuff like that because we'll have a meet and then we won't ride for three weeks, and then we'll have a, two meetings and we won't ride for a month. and it's definitely dragged out, but um, I think it's going to be it's going to be good. The more time you're on the bike, the better. So I think I'll improve, and yeah, it, it is living up to what I expected. I believe um, I was I was looking to be as busy as possible, and hopefully, if I, I keep riding okay, I suppose, and get a guest book in here or there, then just more time on the bike, and that's what I'm here for. So yeah. Uh, Chris Black's got a two-part question. The first part is: Is there anything that you could bring over home, from home? That, uh, that we make a tiny bit of better living here. I miss me dog Pablo, eh? <laughs> Brooke would agree with me that one, and I spent a bit of time with Poppy, Steve O's dog, just, yeah, it's, yeah, I miss me fairy, mate, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, it is what it is, and I just look forward to seeing him in eight months, I suppose. Uh, he's also asked, do you think riding all winter in Australia has helped you settle into British Speedway a bit quicker? I think the um, finishing off the our summer, your winner, um, all the boys from here, that race over here, go home and compete in the Aussie series. So there wasn't really an easy meet and I competed in, mm-hmm. which I believe picked me confidence up a fair bit and not going to a, a race going, oh, I'm, I'm racing against him <laughs> yeah. or I'm racing against him. Now I'm not even looking at it. I just ask Steve what helmet colour I am and we just go from there. And if we come out in front, we come out in front. If not, just another rider beat me. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I'm not... The biggest thing in Speedway, it's, it's a mental game, and Greg Hancock's mentioned it a lot of times, it is a, it is a mental game, and um, the calmer you can be, and you don't really care who you're up against, I think it's going to be better off for them, but um, yeah. yeah. Michael Purvis brings up something that we've heard a lot about, even that's early in the season, it's about tyres, yeah, there's, been a, there's been discussion about the new tyres being used this year, how have you found both the tyres and the tracks you've ridden on so far, compared to back home? Well... It's hard to really say. At here at the moment, I've got a lot more things to worry about than just what tire I've got on. Yeah. And um, being all different types of tracks and stuff like that, that's not like I'm coming here going, oh, last time I was here, it seemed to work a lot better. It could be the tire. So everything's new to me, and um, the tire isn't really worrying me that much to be honest with you, because like I said, I'm not I'm not really thinking yeah. about it. And at the end of the day, everyone has to run them, so I can't say that he's running a better tire than me. So um. It is what it is, and whatever decision the BSPA decides to run on, on which tyre we run, then as it is, that's what's going to happen. But, um, yeah, it's not too bad. At the end of the day, it's black and it's rubber, so. <laughs> yeah, the, the last question, a bit of a jokey one for Richard Cotton, I know, from Rentrock. He's heavily involved in the Bellevue Aces. Um, bit of a Monarchs connection there. He's asked, is Josh looking forward to eventually riding for the Bellevue Aces after serving his apprenticeship at Edinburgh? Hashtag feeder club. Yeah, well, there's one good thing I... <laughs> There's a few riders there, as, as I can understand why he says that with Cookie and all the other boys and Fricky and whatnot, and now Sedge as well. So um, I'm not going to say there's no there's no drama in going to that place. Um, Lemo's team manager, and to have a familiar face and a fellow Aussie, um, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't see no dramas in going to that club if that ended up happening down the track. But for now, we'll just concentrate with Edinburgh and yeah, just go from there, take it as it comes. Josh, thanks for asking, uh, answering every single one of the questions yes, right. that people posted on Facebook. And thank you for joining in. We hope to have more interaction come Friday evening. Uh, we, we have actually named our aftermatch show. It's called Friday Focus. But it does go out on a Saturday, so don't get confused by the title. But it's going to be the Monarchs Friday Focus on EMTV. Uh, coming up now is a regular feature, Mike's Blast from the Past. Two classic Armadale races. Of course, this week we've got two Berwick races. The first of which is a real, real classic from 1997, involving four Monarchs legends, uh, arguably Monarchs legends, uh, Kenny McKenna and Les Collins up against Scott Lamb and Kevin Little. Let's have a look. Well, it's going to be really tight. There's two points in it in favour of the Monarchs as we go into the last race. Kenny McKenna's on gate one here. Uh, Kevin Little's going to be on gate two. 
Les Collins on gate three and Scott Lamb on gate four. We've seen him come galloping around that first turn before. The Monarchs need a shared race to win the match. They've thrown away a number of points. They've had several chances to build up a lead and not taken them. Is it going to be costly? Alongside him there, going into the third corner. It's so tight. McKenna forces his way back to the front again, but Kevin Little's coming up his inside. McKenna's gone ahead. What a storming race. McKenna out to the fence. Little right there with him. Les Collins coming up alongside them as well. This is unbelievable speedway. McKinnis inches ahead, but he's going so wide, and Little's right on that line. Little's gone through. Collins is right there. The bandits are going to get a draw at least. McKinnis steams into that last corner. Here comes Les Collins. And I think it was a shared race. I think Scott Lamb got pushed to the back. We'll get the referee's verdict in a moment. It was unbelievable speedway. I've don't think I've ever seen a better race. Absolutely fantastic race there from 1997, of course, our first year at Armadale. But we don't have to go too far back for our next race. It's from last, this time last year when the Monarchs took on the Berwick Bandits and Max Clegg and Liam Carr, who are going to be involved on Friday, take part in this one. Hit uh, number two, it's Max Clegg coming from gate one, looking very white for the time being. Gate two is a highly experienced Matthew Weathers, 10 years a monarch. Gate three, the totally inexperienced Dan Bewley, 16-year-old signing by the monarchs. He'll never have ridden in conditions like these either. And in gate four, Liam Carr, who's uh, guested here at Armadale quite a lot and, and now has a team place with his home club, the Berwick Bandits, and big things expected of Liam this season. This will be a tough one for the Monarchs, I think. Cars away well, so is Clegg. Really going for the outside. Weathers, though, I think has come through inside Max Clegg. Max trying to come back. Car and Weathers lead the way for the Bandits. Clegg trying to get amongst them. Interesting race for the conditions once again. Clegg out wide and the outside seems to be working okay. <coughs> Matthew Weathers, of course, using all his experience. Here comes Clegg again, tremendous effort. Once again, Weathers has got inside him. Clegg keeps plugging away and he's gone through the middle and that's sensational. And here comes Weathers again. <coughs> trying to press Clegg. Weathers knows how to ride that inside. What a heat this is. Astonishing for the conditions, astonishing. And it's going to be Clegg, is it? Yes, what a win by Max Clegg. That could be a race of the season already. A phenomenal victory, bursting the team riding of the visitors. Matthew Weathers was trying so hard to keep his partner in front, but through the middle went Max Clegg with a magnificent ride, one of his best. Once again, a huge thank you to Mike Hunter there for providing all the race action in this evening's show. Uh, just before we go, Steve-O, again, uh, looking ahead to Friday night, it's going to be a tough encounter and we do really need the backing for the fans, don't we? Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly, yeah. Crucial. You, you can actually hear um, the, the backing that the boys get um, from from the pits, which is which is brilliant. I'm sure it spurs them on. So. It's, it's positive as well, li listening to the guys in the club, uh, within the club, sorry, uh, they're talking about the crowd sizes already. They're impressed, but it's going in the right direction. Hopefully, as the, as the weeks go past, that grows and grows and grows because it, it is crucial for the for the club's future, really. 
Yeah, without a doubt. I think when the weather gets a little bit better as well, the people become a wee bit more confident and and that the, the team is certainly a, a, the team on the track is is definitely worth coming to watch. You know, Sam Masters, Josh, Ricky, to name just three are are fantastic riders. Definitely worth coming coming to watch. Definitely worth coming to watch on Friday. And don't forget, you can get your t- you can buy your tickets on the Edinburgh website. So head over to there once you've watched this show. Uh, again, Lewis Bridger, he's the man to watch this week. He'll be absolutely brilliant around Armadale. I'm absolutely convinced. And it's a crucial championship clash. Can the Monarchs make it three wins in a row? We'll see you Friday. Thank you very much.